we took a bullet train to the future. In this video, we are finally leaving Guangzhou to explore another Chinese city. And this time, it's to a place some have called the city of the future. So join our adventure as we zoom across Guangdong like a bullet, experiencing the lights, delicious food, and the eccentric atmosphere of Shenzhen. You're saying live streaming a live streamer while you're live streaming? What? Live streamception. Dun, dun, dun. Welcome to the Guangzhou Railway Station. South. The South Guangzhou Railway Station. Oh. Not the East, not the railway station, the South. Was there a North? I don't know, there might be. Probably. Or West? West side. Is that a... Are we gonna get shot next time we, we go might. to LA? We might. We are heading out of Guangzhou. I mean, we had plans. We were gonna go to Foshan. We weren't able to go to Foshan. We are gonna go to Dongguan. We're not able to go to Dongguan. We could, but it would probably be a whole process. We'd have to go to the Dongguan Railroad Station, Railway Station, and then metro into the city, metro back out, and then go to Shenzhen. So we're just gonna go straight to Shenzhen. We are taking a Chinese bullet train for the first time all the way to Shenzhen. Nice 30 minute ride. Easy peasy. The ticket process was interesting. We tried to buy the tickets from the ticket machine over there and it was in all Chinese. And then once we figured out which ones we needed, you needed a Chinese document. And buying them online was a bit hard because they kept selling out and Alipay, the Wi-Fi and all that stuff was a bit weird. But my gosh, it's busy in here and they are selling out. The day after Chinese New Year, a few days after Chinese New Year is popping in here. Everyone's going home. So let's try to experience a bullet train in China. We've never been on a bullet train before. Only in Italy. <laughs> oh yeah, true, only in Italy. Oh, never in the, the Asia bullet train, which is where they're known for bullet trains. Yeah. So let's just see how it is. Can it be better than Train Italia? Which apparently is like one of the best in the world, so. Uh, well, we don't have to reserve our seats on this. We don't know that yet. True. It would have been in Chinese. There'll be some Chinese man that comes up, like our Italian man, just like. <laughs> he breathed. He, he was breathing really heavy when we were trying to, when we had to pay him. He's really angry. We bought our tickets half an hour early. There's usually train stations. You can get on the train within 30 minutes. I don't know if we're gonna make it. There's so many people here. It's unreasonable. It's insane. This is a massive city though. 15 plus million people, I think. I cannot believe how many people are here though. Training in China. Luckily, our line for check-in was nice and quick. No one's going to Shenzhen? No, I guess not too many people. We got in, they just, it's associated with your passport, I guess? Because we didn't have a ticket, we didn't have a QR code, we didn't have anything, and they just scanned our passport and bada big, bada boom, we got it. Security was kind of scary. How the heck did we find our seat? We're in carriage 14. Oh, so all the way down at the end? So the opposite direction. We're going, we're heading up towards first class, I bet. Look at this baby. The pure might of the bullet train. It's shaped like a very long bullet. It's called a bullet train because of the shape, right? Not the speed? Oh yeah, I think so. Looks like a, a 45 caliber. Oh yes. I mean, look at this station. Hopefully that Chinese doesn't say, don't walk past this point. It probably just says something along those lines. Right, we're way down, second class. Carriage 14, a bullet train. It's, it's been years. It has been a long time. Let's get on this fracking train. I'm kind of excited, and I'm excited to see Shenzhen. Why is there a lot more people down here? Holy nuts, this thing is long. This is the longest bullet I've ever seen. Wow, we're pushing it. If it leaves two minutes early, we're screwed. We're still on seven. If you see it start closing, shove your arm in the door no matter what. It might bullet away with your clamped arm though. Uh, maybe we should jump in. 
I don't like that these guys are sitting here like acting like it's gonna leave at any moment. So we're a lot slower of a walk. All right, hop back out. <laughs> Bathroom, uh, you know. washing station, and drinking water. That's cool. That's nice. Bathroom is a bit small. Seems like it could use a wash, but it has it. That's nice. I don't know what class we're in right now, but there's tray tables. Are we in the back of the train, sir? We might be all the way in the back. We did get like probably some of the last tickets. This is such a long train. 14, finally. Oh, bullet train. We got there just in time, basically. This is we literally sat down and then it started. Oh no, when is it gonna pull it? I don't know. I'm waiting patiently. I want it to be like a roller coaster where it just. <laughs> Look at that. This station is really cool. There's another little like business district down here. There's some little mountains on this side. It's kind of hot. It is. Will Smith, what are you doing here? Oh, yeah. Well, oh, look at those weird buildings down there. They're all exactly the same height. We're, we're revving. So we have a TV that we cannot understand. Luggage space. A table. The luggage space is nice too because usually our big bags don't fit on train luggage. No. Urban housing. I mean, it's a second class seat. You don't get too many amenities and it's only a 30 minute ride, so it'll be interesting to see the nature out here too. Look at this legroom though. Legroom is, leg is typically an issue on budget planes. Like my knees are usually right up against, so if you compare this to a budget plane, that's where the seat would be. Trains but. are usually good. I can't recall the, any trains being too tight, luckily. But buses, that's another problem. That is. Trains are a comfortable way of traveling. Uh, I feel like it is the most comfortable way to travel, even though it may take a little longer than a plane. Uh, buses can be crammed and very bumpy. Trains are nice and smooth, depending on what country you're in. Like this one is very smooth. How fast is this supposed to get? I mean, it's not, as, it's not that far of a distance, so it can't get that fast, right? It kind of feels quick. It's not like a plane or a train, slower train, where it feels like you're not moving. I feel like we're moving fast. Because we're still slowly accelerating. And by slowly, I mean like a kilometer per hour per second. Well, this is weird. It has a... Are we tilted right now? Yeah, we are. We are definitely tilted. We're gonna slowly fall into this river. Look at a little, well, I thought that was a carnival, but it looks like it's a playground. Oh no, it's a roller coaster. What the heck? We'll see how fast we're gonna get. The fastest I've ever drove in a car was like 212 kilometers an hour. You were a bullet train. Oh, it stopped. Oh, no, it's going. It's going up slower now. Peak around 320, I bet. 328 is my guess. Oh, they changed the thing. They're not impressed by it anymore. All right, so they stopped showing it at 3.06. All of a sudden it'll show up again. 5,000. Oh, and we look outside, it'll just be streets of white going by. I don't feel the accelerating as much anymore. Yeah, no. Kind of seems like we're cruising. Interesting experience. Whoa. We just went through a little fire. Oh. Are we getting time? Oh, it went down. It's going oh. down now. I see. I, it does kind of feel like we're decelerating now. Hopefully you guys enjoy the confusion of us trying to figure out the speed of our bullet train. We just can't handle the modernness of... Oh wow, we really break right there. Alright, let's enjoy the ride. We're 
here. Welcome to Shenzhen, fellow. The most futuristic city ever in the world. We took a bullet train to get here, so it's a good start. Now if there isn't a cleaning street robot that's turned off, when we go out there, I'm gonna be so pissed. Or a self-driving bus. <gasps> Please. Shen Fracken Zen. Zenyatta would be impressed by Shen Zen. Embrace tranquility, dude. We're gonna have to slowly nudge our way into here. He almost forgot the snacks. How did you almost forget the snacks? The massive bag of snackies, dude. That's so important to this travel. Mm. They were taking it all the way up to the front. I don't know what they were going to do with it, but... Eat it, probably. Almost missed it. Time for the stairs. Oh, man. I'm seeing some graded ceiling up here. This is going to be fancy. Is this the one that is fancy? I think so. Or it might not be this one. It might be... The Shenzhen Normal Railway Station. I know one of the metro stations is really fancy. Is it Bay? Because Bay would make the coolest one yeah. Bay, right? That's <laughs> saw, dude. We're gonna get out of here and we're gonna go check into our hotel. The cheapest hotel in Shenzhen about. <laughs> uh, an interesting one. We were, we were a bit scared about this one. Only one way to see if it's good or not. Let's crack and go. Overall, the uh, bullet train experience was good. It was quick, it was easy. I didn't think it was gonna make a stop, but it did make a stop about halfway through. There was a bit of a line for security, but... It was close. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we literally bought it like 30, 40 minutes early. At the train station. So, and they had e-ticketing things there, so like most train stations do, so you can just show up and buy them pretty easily. And it would be much easier if you're Chinese. Yeah, yeah, because you could use your ID and you wouldn't have to go through, like, when you check in, you wouldn't have to do a self check in, like, have somebody check it for you and stuff. Yeah, it definitely helps to have a Chinese number and be Chinese when you're traveling in China. And read and speak Chinese. Yeah, that usually helps too. But everything has worked so far. It's just been, uh, sometimes it's been a bit of a struggle. Oh, we have to scan to get out too. Or we'll go over to this one. We can't go into the nice fancy ones. We gotta go to the line for the PWDs. Determination? Yes. New city, new possibilities. And a new metro. Some glass buildings. Amazing. Is that a turtle shell metro right there? Teenage, we, we fit in. <gasps> this is our metro. We're turtles. Are we living in the future? Whoa. Look at that. It's like all wavy and liney. <laughs> and they didn't add extra metal to in between the metals. Now that's futuristic. Mm. And this tall building has like, it's cool shaped. That is cool shaped. It looks like it's almost going to fall over in the GoPro. And that one is a block, but the windows are different in the middle. We're in Shenzhen. We made it to Shenzhen, we made it to our hotel. Time for a room tour. Oh, you know, small, basic, and there's a hand with a microphone. Huh. What the heck, how'd you find me? I like that we have three beds here. This is one of them in the middle. It's actually one of the softer ones. What do you mean? Should we do a bed test right now? Oh, oh geez, I'm gonna break my collarbone. This hotel. Didn't allow smoking, but it's got a bit of a smoking must. It's not bad. No, it was like the cheapest one we could find here, but it wasn't like super cheap either. It was probably like closing on 40 bucks, high 30s. Wait, we should look at the view first. 
Holy nards. That's incredible. That's even, that's an, wow, I can really see you completely. I can see, like, your legs have definition. Stay there. Yeah, I, it's, the room suddenly became super white. And that's not just because of your shirt. The privacy is not uh, very epic in the bathroom. No. Wait, go in the shower. And during the shower right now, I'm in the shower. You're in the shower? Yeah. I can see you still. And now I am heading over to the toilet and I am sitting. I can toilet. see you sitting there. <laughs> oh no. And for double viewing, I can see it even better from the side in the mirror. So you're saying if I had my pants off right now. I would see a Winkus. But you know what that is? That's just progressive. Yeah. You know, you gotta be okay with everything, am I right? Maybe it's better if the lights are off. Probably. Yeah, yeah, the shower. I still see you so clearly. What about when I'm on the duker? Oh, I can't see like anything when you're on the duker. Hey, that's good. There's really a lot, there's a huge crack in the door. I feel like the smell's gonna leak through. Oh gosh. I need to crack a window. All right, let's practice. I'll take a poop quick. Oh. Pretty good. The water pressure in China has been pretty good. That's a positive and it comes with heating. That's not as impressive. I was expecting Iceland quality. Just pretend to pee. Or I could just look through here actually. Yeah, that's our hotel in Shenzhen. We're not complaining. We picked the cheapest one because it's an expensive place. And uh, if we want to go places like this, we got to stay in places like this. So we just like to do add a little comedy to it to make a uh, lighthearted jokes on our cheap hotels. I'm trying to open this window and it's... And yeah, that's our room. But the best part about this place is not the room, clearly. It's the location. That is so clear. It's like there's nothing there. I told you the location was popping. Look at this. It's so nice outside right now. It's so nice. Why wasn't it like this the entire time? It would have been so much better. Come on, Guangzhou. Why was it so cold there? Come on. Shenzhen's just better. Yeah, even, yeah that's how it works. Guys, it's been a long day. It took a really long time to get here, and it's not that far. It's a tall building. Wow, look at that thing. I bet there's a lot of pictures of that online. Is that the really, really tall one? Do you see another very tall one in the skyline anywhere? I don't see any tall other tall one. I think that's like one of the tallest buildings in the world. Every city in Asia just has one of these. I'm not even impressed anymore. <laughs> yeah, what the frack? All right, let's, we're just gonna walk around this area, get some food and... Because we've literally eaten nothing today other than snacks. So, food time, baby. I don't have my rice yet, so I'm gonna wait to eat that. I'm gonna start with these things. I don't know what the heck this is. It's some sort of purple taro rice cake looking cracker. Hopefully it's good. This happened yesterday when we ordered food. The food comes out before the rice comes out. And you usually eat the food with the rice, like this beef. But we can't eat it yet, so hopefully it doesn't get cold. But this is rice, so I can eat it with this, right? Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh. It's like a very warm, mushy rice cake with what I believe is this taro flavor inside. It's a very slight taro sweetness. It's kind of good. The texture really fills your whole mouth. And this is just another one of those unique, possibly Cantonese food. It seemed like a lot of the food here was Cantonese. Oh yeah. Hopefully that rice comes. Rice has arrived. Also the rice has been really good here. It's very sticky. Look at that. I mean, it stayed in a ball form. It's slowly shrinkifying. Wow. Look at that. This one had two chili peppers. Let's see how spicy it is. I can smell some spice. I got beef last night too at the Vietnamese restaurant and that was really tasty. So how is this gonna fare? We haven't run into too many spicy foods here. Like even the ones that had two chili signs that I've gotten weren't that spicy. Beef. <laughs> some rice projectile down to the bottom. Oh, it's really hot. <laughs> oh, geez. This is spicier. Mm. <laughs> it doesn't look like an enjoyable experience. Very, very. It's really, it sucks because it's beef, so I gotta chew the beef. But it's really back of the throat spice, like really back of the throat. Like it's not even on my tongue or mouth at all. It's just back here. I'm trying to breathe, <coughs> and the rice keeps 
sucking into my throat and the rice is really hot. This is a bad start to a delicious food. That's really good. I don't know what the actual name was. I just saw the picture and it translated into some sort of Chinese name beef. It's delicious. It's a very nice spice too. I actually really enjoy that kind of spice. Nice and spice? Ice spice and everything. I don't know any of her songs. Hey, a nice spice. That's what she sounds like too, I think. Well, that's really good. The, the food here has been really good. And that is no exception. And that's spicy. And I like spicy stuff sometimes to an extent. Did this come out of my mouth? I think so. And this, and this, and this. I got a stir fried rice cake thing and like some cabbage something. That looks so interesting. I've never seen anything like that. <laughs> Just the white slabs with sauce on them. I don't know if I'm supposed to eat this with something or what. I mean, it's already rice. What would you eat it with? Yeah, true. I got the vegetable <laughs> right on there. Really hot. Okay, it's like a rice cake. And then with, I think it's that same vegetable that we see all around here. And I think it was called a water cabbage. So it kind of has a bit of a uh, slight saltiness to it. Pretty good, pretty mild. It's very satisfying to chew. It's kind of like tteokbokki, the Korean one. But a healthier version? Probably, it's not sauced. And we also got some Xiaowang Bao here. I don't know. I think this was the sauce that came with it. Oh, but it's not tea. Xiaolong Bao. This might be a risky move. Soup dumpling, right in the kisser. Don't worry, you have hot tea to wash it down if it's too hot. Are your taste buds fried? They're really good. How is it compared to Din Tai Fung? I don't know, it's so hot. <laughs> what a meal. Some more Cantonese food. I don't know if it's, this is Cantonese. It's something, it's from somewhere. And it's in Cantonese area. The food's good, we always get a huge array of things and it's epic. That's a common thing here. It seems like you buy a lot of small things or you get one big dish and then share it with a lot of people and get some side dishes. It's the best way to do it. What the frack? Are those mozzi sticks? Let's see what's in, I don't know what's inside of them. The translation did not necessarily work the best. What was it? Something about pulp and glutinous rice. I don't know if it's going to be sweet, salty. It's the pulp of meat. a cow. Ooh, it's sweet. And then there's some sort of like sugary syrup type thing in the middle. Like a chocolate? Oh. But it doesn't taste like chocolate. Oh wow, there's a lot of it. What the heck? What flavor is it? It's so hot. <laughs> I just burnt the tip of my tongue. I did that too on the hot tea. Ow, that hurt. So you're saying we should poke holes in all of them? Yes, definitely. It's interesting to have the mixture of a fried food and then a rice cake to coat it. And then you just get a nice burst of sweetness in there. Very delicious. Now, my, oh my gosh, my, the tip of my tongue is dead. I can't taste anything anymore. I poked holes in all of them. That's good. Future people will not be burned, thanks to my mishap. That's always good. Don't drink that tea right out of the thing either. It's really hot. Very delicious. Um, the dumplings were just as good as Din Tai Fung, if not a little better. I really like them once my tongue was not dying from being burned. These things are interesting. I don't think it's good for a meal for one person. Split it amongst the family. Like once you eat about 10 of them, you're sick of them. That was our review of a restaurant that had an L. Long, Long Jing Yong? Right on the tourist street. And it cost us a total of 174. Not too bad. We've had more expensive. Welcome to the land of chocolate. Coco Park in Shenzhen. I really didn't know what to expect. I saw a picture of this area online, but it was just called Coco Park and the metro station is just shopping park. And uh, it's pretty dang cool, actually. I have one critique of Shenzhen already. The metro self-ticketing machines don't work with Alipay, at least for an Alipay. So we have to go up to the ticket counter every time we buy tickets and sometimes there's like a big line or like it seems like it like 
is a bit inconvenient for them and for us. It's very unfortunate. Guangzhou has a plus one for the metro right there. <laughs> That's a tall building. Why do they always make the color scheme red? I swear they want it to look evil. The heck, China? Oh, that one's rainbow. That's more epic. And there's a Burger King right there. That's the most epic thing of all. Is and that a live Panda performance? Pack with Jackson Wang right there? I think it is. Or it's just four random people for Giorgio Armani. That's not as cool as Pan the Pack. Pan the Pack. Throw the meters that we made in. Uh huh, uh huh. Well, they have a live performance at this place. They have a uh, Genki Sushi over there. Those are everywhere in China somehow. There's a fracking dragon that kind of looks like a worm a bit. You can't tell me that's not a worm slash caterpillar fracker. I've never seen a long dragon like that. Me neither. Dairy Queen! You can definitely tell Shenzhen gets more foreign tourists than Guangzhou. Taco Bell, we saw Shake Shack down there. There's Dairy Queen. You get milk with whatever you... The heck? Oh, it's the breakfast menu? Oh, <laughs> did you get a glass of milk? <laughs> That's interesting. That's pretty cheap, 5.9. Taco, we gotta hit Taco Bell. We thought it was KFC, but it's Taco Bell. Taco dude. Bell. <laughs> this place is pretty cool. I'm curious to see what city we'll like more, Guangzhou or Shenzhen. And I have to say, usually we end up liking the city that's less touristy. <laughs> yeah. So we'll see which one it is this time. We'll let you know at the end of this series. Oh wow, look at him. He's like Bob the way he's handling that hammer. Hammer. Can we volunteer to do this? I want to. Oh. Oh, that is quite the loud. Wow. Impressive hammering skills, sir. He's mesmerized. He's going through his life, his past life, where he was a rice hammerer. Oh. Hey, how's it going? Where were you? The rice hammer brought me back to my past life as a rice hammer. <laughs> Making waffles. Donkey? Ice, ice cream. Ice cream. Wowzers. That's time to, ooh. I don't know what that is. Uh, prison outfit sticks. Oh, I like it. Strawberries and strawberry sauce. Now all it's missing is the sprinkles. There they go. Oh yeah, sprinkle it up. Perfect. Oh, okay. Thank you. Look at that for a second thing, baby. Hi. Uh, waffles. You know? What is this? Uh, the texture of a, ca a birthday candle. Oh. I think it is a candle. You're supposed to light it. Strawberry sprinkles waffle. This is how you do it. Take some. Pop it in. Oh. And then? Waffle. Right, where'd you go? Would Donkey approve? Donkey's always making waffles, and when it's not for breakfast, this is what's for dessert. I don't know what that means, but I still don't know what the heck this is. The waffle is crunchy and warm, and they pop right off in the little balls. That's convenient. I got one of these in Macau, but there was just a flavored waffle instead of actually being filled with anything. A bubble waffle. Yeah. It's better with ice cream even, too. This was 35? Yeah, 35. So I thought it was 25. He had a mask on, so it sounded like he said 25, but he said 35. But uh, yeah, let's go. Oh my nuts. That's a fracking worm. It's got to be a caterpillar, right? There's a, even a tail over there. It has two tails. Yeah, it's a caterpillar. <laughs> a creepy caterpillar. Creepy caterpillar. Icy cream. <laughs> Did you make a friend? Uh, yes. Did you make a friend, sir? 
Yeah. What's his name? Caddy, the caterpillar. That's a creative name. It's yeah. almost like you took the animal's name and just added a Y to part of it. No, I've never done that in my life, donkey. It's Caddy. Caddy the caterpillar. Sometimes Caddy talks a lot and then they call him a chatty caddy. Chatty caddy the caterpillar. I'm gonna go under his arm. <laughs> Be careful. It doesn't say don't go under his arm though. Oh, I don't want to get arrested. Going to jail in China? New video? Now I will, I'm gonna pop caddy. <laughs> Think I can claw this with my nail? There's only one way to find out. I'm very swift. Make sure you touch me. Okay, pal. That scared me so much the first time I hit this thing. I thought it would be soft. It's really, really hard. Scam. This was at the thing yesterday. The green thing, yeah. yeah. What the heck is that? There's a lot of long wait restaurants up here. This one has a big wait. This one has a big rate. This is the fancy area? This must be the fancy area. It's a buffet. China buffet? I used to love that place. Daddy, come to me, son. I'm very confused. Like, is this supposed to, is he supposed to go in and then it's supposed to come out and then that somehow his tail comes out from over there and then it's... It doesn't connect very well, I don't think, because that's the end. That's definitely the end, and it goes boom, boom, boom. But from under there, I don't know where it goes. The most logical place would be just like right into his stomach, but then he has this. Hey, somebody messed up. They should have put it like that one over there. Also, do caterpillars have arms and little claws? They have like a thousand arms, but uh, maybe not like there should. Wait, wait, there's one right there too. Oh yeah, what? This is a weird animal. Maybe this is some Chinese animal we don't know about. Dra drag a pillar? That's new. <laughs> We're at the walking street right now. It's a very interesting street. Guys, the metro just closed behind. That's the little metro station right there. And right here. Uh, it's uh, 8.50 and the metro just closed. We're very confused. I don't know if it's just the station or what. It's the like main station of the blue and the green line. It was a really busy station too. I don't know how we could close that earlier. What we're gonna do tomorrow if we're out longer than 8.50, which we've been out every single day later than that. There's just uh, TikTokers right behind us. We're in like TikTok nation. There's literally one over here. There's one right here. And there's this girl right here. There's a guy dressed up in like Arab garment over there. Doing some weird stuff. He's got a crowd. We gotta go see what's going on over there. Let's go. People are live streaming him <laughs> doing his live stream. This is live stream reception right here. I think we've gotten to the point in society where things are just falling apart. People are filming other people live streaming themselves in public and now somebody's live streaming me talking to the camera. <laughs> What a weird, oh my gosh. That's the fanciest McDonald's I think we've ever seen. The coolest Holy looking gosh. McDonald's ever. That's awesome. We gotta investigate this now too. Also, I think that was a Chinese man. I, I think he can wear Arab clothes if he wants to, but uh, <laughs> very interesting to do that. We cannot thing. do that as white people. No. From America uh, specifically. <laughs> wow, it's all about live streaming here. They even got their ring lights. Oh, he's going on the head. He's got a helmet, that's a week. Wow. That's so interesting. There's people live streaming and talking to their stream while recording street performers who are live streaming. <laughs> wow, this is like some, I don't even know if it's dystopian or what type of uh, postmodernist society we're in right now. It's just people live streaming and other people live streaming. It's just content being content on content on content. And then people are just sitting at home watching this. Are they also live streaming while they're watching this? And we're making a video out of this so you guys can watch in the future. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> this is the world we live in today. We didn't see anything like this in uh, Guangzhou. So this is definitely some sort of like tech hub city and then it's right next to Hong Kong which probably has more access to kind of the more social media on the outside so 
This is an interesting place so far. <laughs> this is very, very unique first impressions we're getting. Look at how many people are recording. That woman's talking through a mic to something else. This is crazy. That woman's recording and this guy's recording himself as the, I know, wow. This, wow. this area right here itself is more bizarre than Japan was, and we thought Japan would be very bizarre. I am very shocked, foreigner, shocked by this place. We've made it to the McDonald's. Look at this fracking thing. Holy nuts. We gotta go on the inside to see if there's anything special, right? I mean, Shenzhen, there's been new chains, new foods, new restaurants that we never thought were in China. So, I mean, that menu could be different. Usually when stuff changes like that, it's when we go to a different like region of a country or just straight up a different country. But we just went 30 minutes south of a city and all of a sudden it's just different. So let's see what this fracking thing has. Now, this is fancy. <laughs> I can read this. I can read that actually. Hamburger. This is dragon material. They killed a dragon to receive this. Oh, it's a McCafe, my favorite section of McDonald's. It smells like coffee. Here we go. Oh, this is very reminiscent to the Hong Kong fancy one. Oh gosh. So far their advertisements look exactly the same. Chinese yep. New Year, yep. That's exactly the same. Yep, double Angus thick burger max, dude. Let's Thank get it. Thank you very much. Can I add extra thickness? Oh, no, you can't add any more. Dang it. What you can add? This is fracking epic, dude. This place is pretty busy still, even though the metro is closed. And half of the stores? This is crazy. But it's just a cool outdoor mall walking area, basically. Similar to the one in Guangzhou that was really empty at night. It's like the busyness of Beijing Road, but more similar to the other walking street that I will not name because it was very long. A 3D billboard. Hey, that's a street. And wait a second. Holy nards. We're speed walking. Oh my gosh, it's happening. All for one thing. This is the greatest day of my life. This is the greatest day of my fracking life. Do you see this thing? This will not stop me. Not today. Oh. A hop? Just kidding. Oh, it's a cat. Oh. That's not what I'm here for. Oh, oh. oh we made it. Oh. It's Poe the panda. Walmart version. It's kind of ugly. What else do we know about China? Then Kung Fu Panda. He's kind of tall, like long. He, he lost some weight. This is after he became the Kung Fu Warrior, the Dragon Warrior. Give me your pinky. No. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Skadoosh. Ah! <laughs> Sugar cane juice. Uh, looks like there's a street food area in here. Interesting. Mango steam. Oh, yummy. A lot oh, of street no. food. This area is crazy. What the heck is this? Well, guys, there's a lot of stuff here. This is overwhelming. I don't know how late this is going to be open, but it seems like it would be open all night. But who knows? In China, it seems like things will randomly just shut down at like 10 o'clock. It's just past 9. And some areas of this are not busy at all, and some are really busy. It's weird. This is very.